Okay, we can uh, all be seated. We'll start the press conference. <laughs> Some exciting times going on here in the city of Springfield, and today we come to you to indicate our public safety and traffic flow problem as we have the world-renowned and respected MGM opening up next week. Uh, joining with me in speaking, and let's give her a warm Springfield welcome. Herself and Governor Baker have been great friends uh, to myself, the city of Springfield, Western Massachusetts, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Our congressman and my friend and our go-to guy, Congressman Richie Neal. <laughs> Commissioner, Springfield Police Commissioner John Barbieri, who will be speaking. <laughs> We've had really uh, unquestioned great partnership with our Mass State Police, and an old friend of mine is here, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Barry O'Brien, he'll be speaking, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Mr. Traffic himself, my DPW Director Chris Signoli, who will be speaking. <laughs> my Chief of Staff, uh, on my right hand, Denise Jordan, <laughs> who's been key in all these meetings. And of course, Mr. MGM himself, the President and CEO of MGM Springfield. Put your hands together for Mike Mathis. I also want to thank my city team, many that are in the uh, crowd here today for the many meetings that we've uh, had. Uh, Brian Connors, Deputy Brian Connors, who's representing Kevin Kennedy, who's my Chief Development Officer. Brian, thank you very much for being here. Uh, beautification aspects, my Director of Facilities and Parks Administration, Pat Sullivan. Thank you, Pat. Uh, my city solicitor, as we say, my counselor, Ed Pakula on the legal issues, <laughs> keeps me out of trouble. My money man, Mr. Scotch, my CAFO, TJ Plant Finances. <laughs> my fire commissioner, uh, BJ Calvi. BJ, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Parking himself, my uh, Springfield Parking Authority director, uh, Tom, attorney Tom Moore. And last but not least, the elegant and eloquent Commissioner of Health and Human Services, Helen Colton Harris, who handles all my licensing. <laughs> if I missed anyone, as uh, former mayor, retired Mayor Bill Sullivan would say, it's a mistake of the head, not of the heart. So as we roll this out, we're going to let everyone know uh, that uh, you're going to have a clean, safe, and enjoyable time here uh, in the city of Springfield with the MGM opening. With the MGM opening, the public sector aspect, we're going to have kiosks that have already opened up on the south end of Morris Street and Maine, Taylor Street in Maine. We have a substation on Dwight Street, uh, which is reinvigorating not only Chestnut Towers, but the Pynchon Plaza into our quadrangle area of the Dr. Seuss uh, building. Riverfront is being redone, a 9-11 uh, memorial is going up there, but we also have a police component that will be seen. All these, not only uh, pedestrian, vehicular traffic coming on that. And working with the Springfield Business Improvement District shortly, we will have a hospitality and public safety aspect right here on the corner of Bruce Land and Way and Main Street right across from Court Square. About $13 million annually will be invested. This is a combination of city money, MGM money and state money and working in public uh, safety. We have a separate unit, about 40 officers specifically trained, not only with C3 policing, Commissioner Barberi will get into that, but hospitality. This not only enhances our downtown neighborhood district uh, area, but this also enhances our C3 and neighborhood policing. Doesn't take away from all, any of it at all. Matter of fact, adds to our neighborhood policing as uh, we are moving forward. But we have worked very, very hard in uh, partnership with all our public safety officials from the federal, state, and local level. And under um, my administration and the leadership of uh, innovative and progressive Commissioner John Barbier, we have knocked down overall crime the last four or five years by 45 <laughs> percent. Okay. 
So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. She and Governor Charlie Baker, again, have been absolutely wonderful uh, to work with. Uh, not only a phone call away, many a times they're here in the city of Springfield, and they have been great uh, to myself and the city of Springfield on moving many, many initiatives, uh, whether it goes with our uh, economic development, public safety, infrastructure, our schools. They've been great, great partners. So let's put your hands together for our Lieutenant Governor, Karen Polito. Uh, good afternoon, and a great one it is as we come here uh, together uh, to celebrate a great milestone, not only for Springfield and for Western Mass, but for our Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We are very excited to, to join with you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, celebrate uh, in advance uh, uh, the opening of MGM Springfield in, in just a, a week and uh, how excited we are. I bring greetings from the governor and our entire administration to congratulate you, Mr. Mayor, and all of you who are here with us today on a, a very exciting uh, new development uh, for our state. I, I would like to also uh, just uh, thank uh, MGM for your, your commitment in following through with your promise, Mike. When you said that you were going to embrace uh, this community and honor its history, you truly, truly have done that. Now, I have not had uh, the, the tour yet, but the governor couldn't stop talking about it when he came out here a few weeks ago uh, to walk through uh, the halls and uh, the spaces of the facility. And uh, he was just, you know, just his breath was taken away, so I cannot wait to see it uh, firsthand. And I just want to thank you for your commitment. Uh, we know it will be a huge success, not only for the people who live here uh, to be able to enjoy it, but for so many people who will come from around the world to be here at this state-of-the-art uh, facility. I do want to also uh, thank uh, the mayor for being such a strong uh, municipal partner. I have visited all 351 cities and towns, uh, and I understand that what makes a strong community really starts with strong leadership. Uh, this is a mayor who truly believes and loves the city. I think everyone knows that. And when you think about seven years ago, almost to the date, when a tornado came through this area of the city and of our Commonwealth, it was a very dark day. It was a very dangerous day. It was devastating. And for, for this community to, to rise up and pick up after that really started with the tone and the leadership and the effort and the energy and enthusiasm that this mayor uh, put forward on that very day. And here you are seven years later and look uh, what you have to show for that. Uh, you've got a, a world-class uh, entity in MGM opening. You have people, thousands of people coming through uh, the downtown area We've been able to partner with you on MassWorks grant for economic development and also more housing development, market rate housing, more people, professional and working people want to be here in downtown Springfield. It's just a, a remarkable effort when you think about Mass Mutual uh, and their commitment to growing jobs here, to our partnership with our educational institutes like the Culinary uh, Arts Institute at Holyoke Community College training uh, people who are very excited to get to work at MGM in just a short period of time. And then not only the 3,000 jobs or so that come with MGM, but all of the ancillary businesses that will grow and expand here in the greater Springfield area is really, really exciting. But it really does start with someone believing, putting the team together, following through every day relentlessly to make it happen. But as you think about a community, the most important thing that we as government leaders need to focus on is to ensure the public safety. So we can have all of that, but we need to make sure that people who live here, who work here, and who visit here feel safe and are safe in this community. That's why the multifaceted plan that is being showcased today is really important to emphasize and to allow others to understand completely. We're very happy to be able to play a role as the Massachusetts State Police in the uh, unit for the downtown, uh, the $13 million of state, federal, and MGM dollars that will come forward. 
uh, the metro unit that the mayor has put together, emphasizing that these 40 additional officers for this effort will not take away from the public safety provided to all the neighborhoods in the city. So everyone will get their fair share of public safety uh, support. And then, of course, uh, the gaming unit for the specialized use of this facility will require specialized uh, a unit to make sure that the activities in conjunction with the MGM staff are done in a professional uh, manner so that we continue to attract and uphold the integrity of the uh, entertainment that will be offered at MGM Springfield. Uh, so today I'm very excited uh, with all of you. I look forward to all the good things to come and uh, thank you all for partnering together to ensure the public safety today. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Polito. We again deeply appreciate your friendship and continue support here of the city of Springfield. And someone, once a mayor, always the heart of the mayor, our Congressman uh, Richie Neal, who uh, never forgets his uh, home or never forgets his district. He has been my key conduit, well respected uh, in the halls of uh, Congress and, and uh, well respected here locally. And uh, he had really been on the forefront, steadfast, stick to it of this when it came to uh, Union Station. It was an honor and pleasure to work with you. And I think he'll speak about the public safety component we've done with uh, Union Station. But I think all the elected officials and appointed officials here uh, all tried to move toward with this one good word, a good four-letter word, jobs, and creating more and more jobs of economic development. So let's put your hands together for our Congressman, Richie Neal. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor, and uh, to the assembled leaders of the city and to the uniformed police that are here today. And always a reminder that I've had a great relationship with the Springfield Police Department over what is now a long career and to the state police as well, how grateful we are. I don't know there's a tougher job with the state police than stopping a car on the federal highway or a state highway at three o'clock in the morning and not anticipating or knowing what's at the other end of uh, that simple stop. So I'm indeed grateful for your presence today. And I just want to congratulate the mayor and his staff on something else that, that's really, I can't think of a project in recent memory, for that matter, perhaps long memory, that was more under the scrutiny of critical analysis than MGM's proposal. I mean, really, the magnifying glass was on this proposal. And I know from the inside and the outside as to the attention that was drawn to MGM's proposal. And when you stand here today and you consider that, just as I look west, that this is Springfield's front yard. This is where so much of Springfield's history was born, whether it was the Underground Railroad or John Quincy Adams being waked across the street at the Old First Church or the spectacular architecture of the Central Business District. How grand it is. And as I came through this morning, I was thinking of it, uh, just how beautiful it is with the sun at the right designation at this time of the day. And when you look at the other part of this that I think is uh, noteworthy, MGM's decision to make sure union wages are going to be paid. Do you know what that does for living conditions? The people that will buy homes in the region, that will improve properties across the region, that will invest in the city, that's all part of, I think, the announcement and the excitement that's been generated as well. But, but here's the difficult part, as the lieutenant governor knows, and uh, I'm glad she's here today because she's from central Massachusetts. And uh, in terms of regional equity, those of us who pay attention to this, I've represented much of central Massachusetts for a long period of time. In fact, this district once went all the way into the Archdiocese of Boston. And that's the cover. So I have a pretty good idea of uh, the eastern part of the state and how we have allies, I think, in central Massachusetts for western Massachusetts. So we're grateful for her today and her presence. But here's something else. When it comes to policing and visibility, we're all experts on the past. The challenge is anticipating the future. That's the real difficulty that comes with policing and the nature of the next round of the challenge are, are sure to be met. So my eye as I have gone through the central business district uh, to con again to acknowledge the mayor's role and the police commissioner's role, the kiosks are really neat. They look terrific. And I think that their presence is also gonna act as a deterrence factor. But 
at Union Station, if I can highlight that for a moment, when Commissioner Barbieri and I know that uh, Amtrak police are here today as well, you know, this is about to become a major pedestrian way from Union Street right down to Union Station. And as part of the stimulus money, I never tire of rewinding people, even though it was of great controversy. It helped save the American economy. So 17 more trains a day from New Haven to Hartford and 12 more trains a day from Hartford to Springfield. And the governor has indicated uh, to his credit, and we're grateful for it, that those trains next year are going to go north of Greenfield as well. So the north-south part is taken care of, and the governor's been very helpful to me on the east-west study. So there are so many integrated parts of what we're acknowledging today, but it's going to be a challenge. And any time that uh, as MGM and Mike Mathis have informed me that they anticipate up to, on a normal day, 15,000 people coming through those doors in the central business district, that's pretty profound. 15,000 additional people a day in the central business district. So this whole area is going to be under more scrutiny. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also one of the most complicated factors in public life. And when you consider how much of this area was rebuilt after the tornado, with the help of the federal government, by the way, the federal government provided overwhelmingly tens of millions of dollars to rebuild these structures. So we're, that was a full partnership as well. But one of the challenges, and the mayor and I talk about this all the time, is it relates to police visibility. Perception's reality. Perception is reality. It's what people come to think of public safety. And sometimes, as the mayor noted with the drop in the statistical data, which is really impressive, now our job collectively is try to convince everybody of the merits of that argument. This has really been a great, I think, for, for Mayor Sarno in particular, and again, the professional staff. This has been an extraordinary achievement for you and the staff, and congratulations from the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Neal. Always kind words, Rich. I appreciate that. Um, I think everybody knows how I feel when it comes to public safety, whether it's our men and women in blue at the Springfield Police Department or our state police. I don't envy what you do, but I respect what you do. And you have a very, very difficult job. And when the call comes out, uh, you always answer that tolling of the bell uh, to help others uh, in their time of need. And I know at times it gets very, very difficult. Uh, but we'll continue to, to stand with what you do, and we wish you uh, all Godspeed. And with that, I want to bring up uh, our police commissioner, Springfield Police Department Commissioner John Barberi, who has been asked with his staff, I know that the Deputy Cochran is here, Captain Huffnagel, Sergeant Elliott, and many others, they go around the country at times being asked to speak. Lieutenant Akers is here on C3 policing, other models that we're doing. So many a times Springfield is being used as a model, not only in economic development of $3.7 billion, our schools, uh, what we're doing here, and, and public safety. Uh, and John is a very, very innovative and progressive uh, leader, and he's put across many, many great initiatives. And uh, now uh, Commissioner Barberi will speak specifically on the public safety component of our downtown uh, area, our downtown neighborhood. And again, this will not uh, detract from any of our other neighborhoods. It's actually going to enhance continued uh, C3 policing in our other neighborhoods. Put your hands together for Springfield Police Commissioner John Barbieri. Good morning. So next weekend is a landmark event and another step towards the revitalization of Springfield. This plan's been a work a very long time. 2014 was challenged with not only protecting a billion dollar investment, but supporting an economic infrastructure for an entire metro area, which is just critical to the Springfield in, in, in whole, the entire community. First challenge was to not just protect downtown and to encourage investment and to support the concept, a very worthy concept, that Downtown will be a great place to work, it'll be a great place to live, it'll be, certainly be a great place to be entertained, but it'll be a safe place and a safe environment for all of those. So the first start was, holistically, how to improve public safety in the city as a whole. And I'd like to first thank the men and women of the Springfield Police Department, because when I asked them 
to step up, they rang the bell hard. We reorganized the entire department to put more men and women into uniform and less officers in investigative or administrative roles in anticipation of staffing needs for the metro area. We looked at our most vulnerable neighborhoods and we didn't forget those people that needed us most. We staffed C3 policing in four of our most critical, our most vulnerable, our most neediest neighborhoods to provide a holistic sense of delivery of services for not just law enforcement, but public safety. Then the mayor, Mayor Sarno and the city council stepped up in 2014. They provided us an additional 24 officers. In 2015, they provided an extra captain's position to assist with planning and preparation. 2016 was another 15 officers and five sergeants to help us staff the metro area. Again, not to detract from neighborhood safety. The neighborhoods the businesses, the entire city of Springfield remains the priority. And again, I want to thank the men and women, the middle managers, the uniform division, and support services staff for their efforts in not just maintaining service, but stepping up and providing service above and beyond the expectations. 45% drop in crime in five years was unimaginable. The goal for the metro area is busy streets are safe streets. And how do we support that? And we support it through high visibility. Not just officers on foot, not just officers on bicycle, not just officers in cruisers, but sustained, highly visible presence. Kiosks, substations, in critical areas where there's going to be high levels of pedestrian foot traffic. Union Station to MGM to the south end to the front and back of the casino and the front and back of the Mass Mutual Center. Day or night, you'll see police officers. This will be a safe location. And the more people that inhabit it, the safer it will be. This will only get better as MGM grows and the city grows with it. Above and beyond our presence, those officers and those folks that, that occupy, work, and are entertained in the MGM and metro area will be supported by a real-time crime analysis center with the recruitment of private and the installment of public cameras. We'll be able to do random real-time patrols. We'll be able to contact officers in the area and provide immediate public service assistance to anyone in the metro area. We've collaborated hard with our state, local, federal, enforcement agencies on public safety. But there's been no place that we've worked harder than with the Massachusetts State Police in regards to collaboration for the Gaming Enforcement Unit. Gaming Enforcement Unit will consist of Mass State Police supported by Springfield Police. And they'll be ably supported not just by the men and women of the Springfield Police Department, but a 40 unit strong police unit stationed right outside, right outside MGM stores in the metro area, able to respond, able to alert, and able to assist the thousands of security officers already employed by MGM. I can't be more prouder of the Springfield Police Department. I can't be proud of our partners. And uh, I certainly want to thank everyone on the mayor's team that made this happen. Thank you, boss. I also want to thank uh, City Council Jesse Letterman, uh, who is here. Jesse, appreciate that. And if any other city councils are here. And I can't forget uh, Captain Phil Tarpey, who was uh, also here. As Commissioner Barberi alluded to, uh, we have had an uh, outstanding uh, partnership with our state police. Uh, it goes back, and Lieutenant Colonel Barry O'Brien and I have known each other from days of DA Billy Bennett's office. We were in there 10, 12 years, and I think people across the state marvel on how we continue uh, to work together. And uh, Barry has been an outstanding uh, leader. And uh, this partnership, again, is going to continue to be very beneficial uh, to Springfield and the Western Mass area. Put your hands together for Lieutenant Colonel Barry O'Brien. Thank you, Mayor. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Colonel Kerry Gilpin. I'll first say that in terms of importance, I think the commissioner hit the nail on the head. It's cooperation, it's collaboration. 
and I don't think we've ever had as far back as our relationship goes with the Springfield Police Department, I don't think we've ever had uh, a better relationship right now um, than in the past. It, it's, uh, it's been just as MGM built from the ground up, we were already in Springfield, but we've built this gaming enforcement model from the ground up. And I want to talk a little bit about our gaming enforcement unit. It's the investigative arm of the State Gaming Commission. Right now, we are already deployed in Plainville at Plain Ridge Park Casino. We are going to be deployed very soon here in Springfield. And when Everett gets up and running, we'll be in the city of Everett as well. It's a task force model. The Springfield Police Department will be embedded within the gaming enforcement unit of the state police. That commander is here today. Lieutenant Tim Babin is here. He'll, he'll command the gaming enforcement unit in Springfield. They will be on the front lines within the footprint of the casino. And by footprint, I mean the hotel, the garage, the gaming floor, the admin offices, the entertainment block, the outside venue. They'll be the first responders to just about any incident you can, you can name. Criminal, public safety, they'll be assisted by MGM security. And then if the need arises, of course the Springfield Police and the State Police have all kinds of assets uh, at their disposal. Really the goal of the Gaming Enforcement Unit is to ensure that everybody has a safe and enjoyable experience within MGM. They're there to respond to incidents for public safety and to ensure the integrity of the gaming operation. They've had extensive training. They've been all over the country learning about best practices in all different types of casinos throughout the country. So I think the one goal, if I could echo the other speakers on the stage, is to ensure that everyone's experience is safe and enjoyable, and I'm confident that we'll realize that goal. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel O'Brien. Appreciate that. Um, and uh, now, people, obviously, we put out information pertaining to the traffic flow and, and the parking, logistics, and the team has worked very, very hard. But I'll bring up my DPW uh, guru, uh, Chris Signoli, to uh, briefly speak uh, on that, uh, that after a lot of planning, uh, we feel confident. And this is a good, I don't want to say issue, this is a good thing to have, a lot of traffic. <laughs> traffic in our city, pedestrian and vehicular traffic, and we're going to manage it properly, and we're going to have people be able to expand in downtown our neighborhood areas. So put your hands together for DPW Director Chris Signoli. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, when the DPW and other departments in the city became involved in this project, it was all the way back when we were looking at multiple vendors coming into the city. And one of the things that has been accomplished this year is all of the off-site work associated with the casino so they can operate every day is completed. Uh, Main Street, uh, State Street, Union Street, East Columbus Avenue, and other places in the city have been redone. And two weeks ago, a presentation was made to the Gaming Commission uh, to tell them that the city of Springfield was ready for this facility to open. Not just opening day, but open every day after that. Um, one of the things that we did as a city as we started to move forward closer to the opening is back in February, uh, my friends in the police department, uh, Lieutenant uh, Beliveau, Captain Huffnagel, Sergeant uh, Elliott, and Deputy Chief Cochran, we met every Tuesday uh, starting back in February. And it wasn't just police, it wasn't just DPW. Uh, I want to make sure, I'm looking at my list, I want to make sure. Fire, police, AMR from ambulance, parking authority, transit authority, towns along Meadow, West Springfield, Aguam, the Massachusetts State Police, MassDOT, and the Gaming Commission. 
And what we discussed was A, how the facility was going to open next Friday, what that weekend was going to be like, and what we're going to be moving forward in the future. The plan that has been put together and will be implemented next week will be able to be implemented any time in the future. And by saying all those people were together, um, it has been vetted. We are all extremely comfortable with what each one of us has to do in coordination with each other. And right now, next Friday, we're eagerly anticipating the opening. Uh, in City of Springfield, will be ready. Our roads are ready. Our sidewalks are ready. Our landscaping is ready. Um, and with the traffic in the City of Springfield, as the mayor says, more traffic is good. Uh, people are always are talking now about, hey, there's a lot of cars on Main Street. Yes, there is. And that's great. Uh, getting through the city is wonderful. We have a lot of people coming up to myself and other people in the city saying how great the facility looks, Michael, and they can't wait to see it. Um, so for those of you who haven't been there, please go down and take a look at it. We look forward to seeing you there next Friday. Our traffic plan uh, between the DPW and MGM, uh, we have been doing a lot of public presentations so that everybody knows what's going on. So next Friday, if you drive up and down Main Street right now, there's variable message signs telling you that, guess what, a casino's opening next Friday. And up and down East Columbus and West Columbus. What we want everybody to understand is when they show up uh, next Friday, uh, everything's going to be controlled downtown. The traffic is going to be controlled. You're going to be safe. And you're going to be having a wonderful time in a wonderful facility in the city of Springfield. So again, thank you to my friends in the police department for really putting together a plan. And the plan, as I said, is not just a traffic plan. It's not a policing plan. Uh, it's not just a bus plan to get people from the Big E here. It's a plan that everybody worked together on. And I have to say thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Director Signoli. Good job, Chris. The president and COO of MGM Springfield, Mike Mathis, uh, has become a very, very good friend. MGM has been an outstanding corporate citizen, as many of the outstanding corporate citizens we have here in the city of Springfield, whether uh, Mass Mutual, the Big Ys, uh, the Bay State Medical Centers, and go on and on. And MGM is blazing their own path. Uh, the partnership and the communication has been very, very strong. MGM again brings a well-respected, world-renowned name in entertainment. And everything and anything they do is first class. And we're very proud uh, to have MGM here after a very, very uh, healthy uh, bidding war that we had. But the cream rises to the top. MGM now becomes the largest taxpayer here in the city of Springfield. The partnership we put across is uh, not only on tax base, but on jobs and economic development, entertainment, dining, retail, and marketing of the whole city of Springfield and Western Mass uh, area. So with that, we are proud that uh, MGM's really $1 billion investment a part of the $3.7 billion of economic development going on here in the city of Springfield, much of it being on the uh, private sector. And this continues to highlight our administration on public-private collaborations. So I'm very pleased and honored to introduce the president and COO of MGM Springfield. Put your hands together for Mike Mathis. Good afternoon, everyone. I've got the privilege of closing the program. Um, really exciting times for all of us in the MGM family. Um, I'm always, I always have mixed emotions when the mayor talks about uh, the co financial contribution that MGM is making. I've got my boss sitting in the corner, and it's, he's going he's gonna to give me a hard time about getting taken advantage at the negotiation table. But uh, it, was a, it was a really a wonderful collaboration, and we were really privileged to um, make an investment in not just the city, but in specific elements of the city. And one of those at the forefront was public safety. We are going to be paying, and we're proud to pay, two and a half million dollars annually towards public safety. And that's to put men and women in new equipment, get them trained, um, so that they can help us welcome our guests. Public safety in the tourism industry is as much about being an ambassador of the brand 
as it is about public safety. So as I look around this room and I see the men and women in uniform, I don't see agencies, I don't see departments, I see partners and collaboration, um, collaborators. Uh, so thank you all for being here today. We're excited, as the mayor mentioned, we expect, or I think as Congressman Neal mentioned, we expect 15,000 or so folks daily to come uh, downtown and explore, and they won't stay just on our property. They're going to explore the downtown. We've seen that firsthand. It's really, uh, I wish all of you that are seeing uh, this on video could see our view on the dais. We're looking at beautiful Court Square. The sun is out, and we're looking at beautiful buildings. Uh, and those were here long before we came here, and I think our opportunity is to put a spotlight on them. I do want to call out a few folks because I really do feel like this is a partnership. We talk about Team Springfield in a bunch of contexts. When it comes to public safety, it's truly Team Springfield. Um, I want to start with Lieutenant Governor Polito. Uh, I've heard in the past, long before I came, that Beacon Hill didn't necessarily always show a lot of love to Western Mass. I will tell you, I haven't felt that. The Baker administration has been out here many, many times. I see Lieutenant Governor Polito out here all the time. She's very supportive of, of all that we're doing out here. So thank you very much for being here today. <laughs> I also want to recognize uh, Commissioner Barbieri. What a tremendous feat. I don't think, it, I don't think you can say it enough. Uh, a 45% drop in violent crime. That is tremendous, and that's something that we should, all should be proud of. So congratulations. <laughs> Uh, our, 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 our friends, our, the men and women um, in state police, uh, you are out there on the facility with us. We're going to be welcoming a new industry to this jurisdiction, and we've got a lot of folks that are coming to visit us, and couldn't be happier about the partnership. I think we all feel really good about uh, the opening and the, and the throngs of folks that are going to come and visit us. And on behalf of uh, our 3,000 men and women that are a part of the MGM family at MGM Springfield, I want to thank you. I'm looking at Officer Babins. I appreciate all the support you've given us. Thank you. Uh, Chris Signoli, one of the unsung heroes in this process. Uh, we, have a, we have a team, uh, a staff meeting every week, and for the last month, month and a half, we've been talking about uh, Friday, August 24th. And there's a sweet spot to chaos, and we're hoping to, to, to get to that sweet spot. We're expecting tens of thousands of folks to come down over that day, over that weekend. And this city's got to be ready to receive them. So uh, thank you for all your hard work on the logistics around that. Appreciate it. And, and lastly, uh, for uh, my favorite mayor, uh, the best mayor in America, Dominic Sarno. Uh, I think he's now, I think I'm officially Mr. MGM. Is that my, my tagline? Uh, I only wish my middle name was Gary, right? Um, but uh, couldn't, couldn't be uh, prouder to be associated with the mayor. It goes back to even before June 2011 when the tornado hit. Um, those of you that have been in this community know that it goes back to when uh, the city had a financial hardship on the, on the brink of bankruptcy uh, and then compounded by natural disasters as well as the plight of a lot of great American cities. Um, think about what he inherited and where we stand here today. I, I don't know that there's a bigger accomplishment across America for municipal government and a mayor like Mayor Sarno. So thank you. Um, I'll just close on this because I think it's really about the people. Uh, we've got a small city within our 14 and a half acres. 3,000 people have joined our, our forces. Uh, for many of them, it's their first career in hospitality. I've told them it's going to be their last career in, in hospitality because we expect them to stay with MGM and stay in this industry. But nothing makes me prouder than to see those folks uh, walk up and down Main Street. Um, I've got young people that are choosing to live downtown in market rate housing. Uh, they talk about how they can get rid of their car because they're walking everywhere. Walking everywhere, As you know, Springfield is a very walkable city. So I think the greatest cure for public safety, in addition to our officers, is just people on the streets. I've never felt unsafe um, in a group walking up and down Main Street ever. And that's what we hope to bring uh, on August 24th, and that's what we're bringing today. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you. I don't know if you have any questions. The individuals and specific individuals are here if you have specific questions, but we'll take any questions that you might have. If not, we really appreciate you being here and, again, spreading the word that you're going to come to downtown Springfield, the city of Springfield. You're going to have a, it's going to be clean, it's going to be safe, and you're going to have a very enjoyable time. 
with the partnership uh, that we have with our state government, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Governor Baker, with MGM, with uh, Mike Mathis and his team, and the local government here in the city of Springfield. So the red carpet is out. Uh, we are very hopeful to see you. Logistics are in place, and we are ready to rock and roll. So any questions you might have? Okay, that ends the press conference. Thank you very much. Hold on. I'm so excited. Yeah, great.